Insightful podcasts by informative hosts. Insights into Things, a podcast network. Welcome to Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Your hosts are Joseph and Madison Whalen, a father and daughter team making their way through the challenges of the teenage years. Welcome to Insights into Teens. This is episode 167, Optimism. I'm your host, Joseph Whalen, and my upbeat and positive co-host, Madison Whalen. You just ruined it. Uh, <laughs> see, but you've been giving some really good things this week, right? I know, I know. I'm... So how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. See? Pretty good is pretty good. I mean, that's pretty optimistic for you. Fair enough. What what exciting things have happened to you since the last podcast? Um, tomorrow I'm going to be having a com uh, a combination of uh five tests and quizzes. So what happened to you since the last podcast is tomorrow you're going to have five quizzes and tests. Right. Okay. okay. Fine. I I know that. Okay. Um. But uh, yeah, what really happened back then? <laughs> Nothing, huh? It's been kind of a slow week for you, huh? I, I mean, like, we did stuff on the weekend, I know. We uh, made eggs. We made eggs. Well, well, you made eggs. We painted eggs. We painted eggs. I didn't, unfortunately, because I was under the weather. Womp, womp, yeah. womp. I was looking forward to that, too. Anyway, clearly we don't have any banter to go over today. Boring uh, pre, pre-show pre uh, chat here. But Sorry, guys. It's all right. We're going to be optimistic about this, though, right? Sure. So optimism and pessimism are states of mind that can have a profound impact on how we interact with the world. They can impact our physical and mental health and even our long-term outlook on life. In today's episode of Insights into Teens, we're going to take a look at the importance of optimism, its impact on us, and how we can improve our lives by training ourselves to think more optimistically. But before we do that, I'd like to take a chance to invite our listening and viewing audience to subscribe to the podcast. You can find audio versions of this podcast listed as Insights into Teens. You can find audio and video versions of all the network's podcasts listed as Insights into Things. Pretty much anywhere you can get a podcast these days. I would invite you to write in, give us your feedback as well. <clears throat> you can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. You can find us on Twitter at insights underscore things, or you can find links to all those. I'm distracted because I got stuff popping up on <laughs> my screen here. I'm sorry. Or you can find links to all those and more on our official website at insightsintothings.com. Ready? Yep. Here we go. So we're going once again to the well of kidshealth.org here, which has been a extremely valuable resource for us yep. for this string of what will be eventually 10 podcasts. Before you keep listening or viewing the podcast, take a moment to think about some of the things that happened to you today. Even better, grab a pen and write down a few specific events. Go ahead, pause the video and do that now. Okay, I assume everyone did that already. Well, or, you know, the audio. Or or the audio, yeah. We don't want to discriminate. You can pause both of those and then, you know, come back. So what'd you come up with? Was it mostly positive stuff? Like, my day's going great. My grandmother made me pancakes for breakfast. I sat with my friends at lunch, and I actually enjoyed English class today. Or did your mind land on the things that went wrong today? My grandmother cooked breakfast and it may be so late I missed the bus. My friends wasted their entire lunch period gossiping about a boring TV show. Or I had English class today. I hate weekdays. That was a simple little check of whether you're thinking optimistically or pessimistically. There's a difference, 
and it can have a profound impact on us in many ways. Optimism is healthy. Researchers have spent a lot of time studying people who think positively. It turns out that an optimistic attitude helps us be happier, more successful, and healthier. Optimism can protect against depression, even for people who are at risk for it. An optimist outlook makes people more resistant to stress. Optimism may even help people live longer. The best thing about optimism is you can learn it, even if your outlook tends to be more pessimistic. So let's take a look at optimism versus pessimism. <clears throat> Optimists and pessimism, optimism, I'm sorry, and pessimism are mindsets. They're ways of thinking and seeing things. Optimists see the positive side of things. They expect things to turn out well. They believe they have the skill and ability to make good things happen. You've probably heard of people who tend to see the faults in everything called pessimists. I'm often referred to as a pessimist. A pessimist is more likely to expect things to turn out poorly or to focus on what didn't go well. People aren't always optimistic or always pessimistic, but most people tend to lean toward one of these thinking patterns. The good news is if you tend to be more pessimistic, you're not destined to always think that way. We can all become more optimistic by adjusting the way we see things. So what do you consider yourself? Are you an optimist or are you a pessimist? It's complicated, being honest. Well, um, simplify it for us. I guess I'm somewhere in between. I wouldn't say I'm a full-on pessimist, and I definitely wouldn't say I'm a full-on optimist. I probably lean more towards the pessimistic side most of the time, but I can also be pretty optimistic. Well, and what I have found is that you tend to, to lean on the pessimistic side, but it's not difficult to sway you to the optimistic side. And I, I find a lot of times that's kind of the role that I wind up playing because you'll call me or we'll talk and I'll ask you how your day was and you'll rattle off five different things and give me the negative perspective on those. Like, for instance, you've got five tests tomorrow. To you, that was a negative thing. To me, that's a chance for you to prove yourself that you've learned all the things that you've learned during the marking period. It's a chance. It's the end of the marking period, so it's a chance to bring home good grades if you bring home A's, you get rewarded for those A's. So to me, that's all a positive thing. Yeah, you got to take tests. Well, everyone is tested in some form or another. But that's a chance to excel, and that's a chance for you to prove to yourself how much you know and how good you are. You kind of see the direction that I'm going with that? Yeah. <laughs> um. I definitely know that I'm very pessimistic when it comes to school in certain instances, especially when it comes to tests. Um, and I guess especially for certain tests, because, like, some of them I don't really mind because, like, uh, the subjects come easy to me. But others, when the subjects really don't come easy to me, it's like I feel pressured and I, I don't like taking them because I don't know if I know the material or not. That's an interesting take on things. So if the subjects come easy to you, what do you learn in those subjects if they come easy to you? Um, I mean, I kind of, I, I mean, I learn the skills for them, but really, other than that, I don't really learn much from them. Yeah, see, and that's my thing. Like, I like to be challenged. If I'm challenged, it means I'm expanding myself. Um, I was asked today, as a matter of fact, we have some some old audio equipment laying around. And I was asked by my boss if I could, you know, we don't need it anymore. I was asked if I could sell it on eBay. I've never sold anything on eBay. I'll give it a shot. If nothing else, we might not make any money on the equipment, but I'll at least learn something about how to use eBay at that point. So I like being challenged. I like, I like being asked to do things that I don't normally do and to figure things out. Uh, that's always something that's a chance for me to educate myself. So when things come easy to me, it's, yeah, okay, I can cruise through the day and, and bang stuff out and, and get tasks done, but I don't really gain much from that. 
what do you like the 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 subjects that you that don't come easy to you what do you what do you find negative about them because you seem most pessimistic about those types of subjects um I guess, like, the stuff that doesn't really come easy to me, it seems like much more of a chore to even get through, and half the time I don't really want to do that. For the subjects that, like, do come easy to me, it's like I can find some enjoyment in the fact that, like, okay, I can get this done and over with, see? And, and like, it's one of those things where it's like, um, I gain a task, an easy task that I've done. However, when it comes to the subject I fi- subjects I find to be, like, more difficult to grasp... I don't get to cruise through them a lot, and it's really a drag when it ha- when I have to go through them. So do you think that your negative or your pessimistic outlook on those subjects makes those subjects more grueling and difficult to deal with? I guess, probably. And do you think your optimistic view of the subjects that come easy to you or come naturally to you, do you think that optimism makes those more enjoyable? Maybe. So do you think there's a logic in maybe trying to change that pessimistic outlook on those other subjects that are difficult? I guess so. Because if you can look at them more optimistically and and look at them in a more positive light, you might find that they're easier to get through. See, the problem that I have is people look at me as, as pessimistic because I am the type of person who is most likely to look for the bad things that happen. But that's the nature of the job that I have. You know, it's, there are days that every day is an, an emergency. There are weeks that every day is an emergency for me. And if I'm not looking for the next emergency, then I'm not preparing myself or my team to deal with that next emergency. But I'm not overly negative when these things happen. To me, it's inevitable. So if I find them and I prepare for them ahead of time, it makes us more capable of dealing with them. A lot of people at my company don't like to see negativity like that or people that are looking for the negative things. But most of the time when I do it, it's because I'm seeking a positive outcome. You know, if I go out and I start probing the security of our web servers, for instance, I'm not doing that to be negative, I'm doing that to find vulnerabilities so that other people don't find those. So it's kind of a, 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 I don't know, a backwards way of being optimistic, I guess. Do you want to be more optimistic? Yeah, I mean, you obviously you recognize your pessimistic side, but do you want to change that? Do you, do you want to be more optimistic? I mean, I feel like it could probably be a lot more better for my mental health than, you know, the way I just react to things. So yeah, it'd be nice. Well, and you mentioned that you've you've been very optimistic. You know, I've joked around with you, but you know, you've had three days today where you said three days this week where you haven't been that bad, and that's optimistic for you. Do you feel that that has an impact on your day to day activities when you are a little bit more positive? Yeah, like, I don't, like, get super freaked out about everything. I can actually spend a lot more time focusing, and I find a lot more enjoyment out of things. Now, do you think those around you, in general, are optimistic or pessimistic? Um, uh, some people I know are definitely more optimistic than others, and other people are more pessimistic than others. It's kind of a mixed bag, I guess. And how do you... Uh, interact with those who are pessimistic. Do, do you think that being around pessimistic people kind of weighs on you? Do you think optimistic people lift your spirits and help you out? What kind of effect do, do outside people have on you with optimism and pessimism? Um. Well, with the people that I trust, I tend to talk about my pessimistic uh, sides, and there are certain people that I'm able to joke around with more that have a much more optimistic view, while with the others, more pessimistic friends, I kind of like that those are the ones that I normally vent to the most. Okay. Now, do you think that if you're able to improve your outlook and be more optimistic. Do you think that's something you might be able to help others do as well? Maybe. Because uh, the thing is, 
I um I normally try to uh show myself as being happy on the outside when I see that one of my friends uh isn't feeling great because you know I feel as though like maybe my happiness will rub off on them or like something along those lines. Does that work? Uh, I I can't uh always tell some I think with some of my friends it does. Uh not sure about others. Okay. Interesting. I think I like that idea of happiness rubbing off on others almost like it's a conti- like having a cold, you know. Yeah. Be around people when you're happy, you can make them happy too. But we're going to take our first break and when we come back we'll talk about how optimism can help people succeed. We'll be right back. All right. Insights into Teens, a podcast series exploring the issues and challenges of today's youth. Talking to real teens about real teen problems. Explore issues from braces to puberty, social anxiety to financial responsibility. Each week, we talk about the topics concerning today's youth. We look at how the issues affect teens, how to cope with these issues, and how parents, friends, and loved ones can help teens handle these challenges. Check out our video episodes on youtube.com backslash insights into things. Catch our audio versions on podcast.insightsintoteens.com or on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights into Teens. Today we're talking about optimism. And now we're going to talk about how optimism helps people succeed. Optimism goes beyond seeing the bright side of a situation or expecting good things. It's also a way of explaining what has already happened. When something good happens, optimists think about what they did to make the situation turn out so well. They see their abilities as permanent, stable parts of themselves. They think of how this good thing can lead to other good things. When things don't go as expected, it's the reverse. Optimists don't blame themselves. They see setbacks as temporary. When something goes wrong, optimists think, optimists link it to a specific situation or event, not their capabilities. Because they don't view setbacks as personal failings, Optimists are able to bounce back from disappointment better than pessimists. So here's an example. Griffin and Jake both try out for the basketball team during sophomore year. Neither makes the final cut. Both feeling disappointed, but they handle it in different ways. Griffin is an optimist. He thinks, There was a lot of talent at the tryouts and only a few openings. They pushed me to practice hard and I played my best. It felt good. The coach gave me great feedback. I'm going to work on the things he suggested and watch all the games this season. That way, I'll have a better chance next year. Griffin is focused on the specific situation, not on personal shortcomings. He doesn't see the situation as permanent. He fully expects to get on the team next year and is already thinking of how to make it happen. Jake tends to be more pessimistic. He thinks, no wonder I didn't make it. I was the worst one at tryouts and the coach doesn't really like me. I never get a break. I might as well face it. I'm just not a great athlete. Unlike Griffin, Jake takes the setback personally. He blames himself. But he also sees outside factors, the coach, life, as working against him as well. Even worse, he lets this one event make him doubt his athletic abilities altogether. Which guy is more likely to be discouraged longer? Who's more likely to practice more and try again? Who's more likely to give up? Optimism builds resilience. Optimism lets us see disappointing events as temporary situations that we can get past. It strengthens us to try harder rather than give up. It allows us to keep our goals and dreams in mind so we can act on the motivation to keep working toward them. Because of this, optimistic people feel more in control of their situations and have higher self-esteem. Pessimism influences us to take disappointments and rejections personally. 
It also makes them seem more permanent than they are. A pessimistic outlook exaggerates the negative aspects of a situation, so they overshadow anything positive. Pessimistic thinking makes it harder to cope when things don't go as hoped. Realistic optimism. Optimism isn't about seeing everything as rosy. Optimists don't ignore problems or pretend life is perfect. They just choose to focus on what's good about a situation and what they can do to make things better. Optimists have true confidence because they're prepared. They know they need to study if they want to ace a tough test. They know they can't make the basketball team without practicing. Optimism goes hand in hand with action. It de- it's about finding a healthy balance of positive and realistic thinking. So is there a place for pessimism? <clears throat> Pessimism can drag us down, so it's good to know we can change a negative mindset. But that doesn't mean erasing all negative thinking. A healthy, what's wrong mindset lets us zoom in on a problem. Thinking about what could go wrong helps us avoid too much risk. Imagine if your brother is texting while he drives you to rehearsal. Your negative thinking alerts you, hey, this isn't good. So you tell your brother to stop if not for his own safety, for yours. In this case, you're combining pessimistic thinking, texting leads to car accidents, with optimism. I know I can do something about this. Just about all of us go through a rough patch now and then where it can seem like nothing is working. It's healthy to identify feelings when we're discouraged, and it's okay to talk about what's wrong. Confiding in someone can lift your mood and remind you of the po- of the optimistic possibilities. Negative thinking can keep you can help you move forward as long as you don't get stuck focusing on what's wrong. So in that scenario that they talked about here with the two guys and the, the <clears throat> sports team, I know sports really is not your thing. Which one do you think you would be? Even if you change the scenarios up to say you're trying to trying out for a play or or a band or something, which one of those do you think you would be? Probably the second one. Why? Uh, because I tend to be the type of person to doubt my own abilities before I doubt any specific situation. I can tend to think that the world can be against me for certain reasons, and uh, I normally go to blaming myself uh, before anything else, really. So, the other take on this is <clears throat> when things go right, you don't give yourself credit for it either. So you kind of have a pessimistic view on positive things. <laughs> yeah. So why is that? Like even when you get straight A's or you fail to study for a test, but you still do good on the test, why don't you ever give yourself credit for the accomplishments that you have? You you always seem to have that negative take on those types of things as well. Why do you think that is? Uh, I think it's because I'm scared of, like, thinking that, oh, just because I've done it so many times doesn't mean that there's going to be a, doesn't mean that I'm going to always be able to succeed. So I kind of just tell myself that, hey, let's not really dwell too much on this uh, because you don't think that it's going to last. So you don't dwell <clears throat> on the positives, you instead dwell on the negatives. And there has to come a point where if I pass every test that I take for three years straight, there has to be some point in human nature where I have to think, well, chances are, even if I just play the statistics, chances are I'm going to pass this test. So maybe I shouldn't freak myself out about it. Does, is that logical to you? Can you, like, kind of wrap your head around that? I can. Uh, you just choose not to. Yeah, I guess it's <laughs> also in part to my own self-esteem and just how I view myself, so. So I think I think that's a good point. Part of this is really is about self-esteem and about self-confidence. You know, you what do you think you need? to improve your self-confidence to the point that you can look at your own accomplishments and accept the fact that you're a fairly accomplished individual? What is it that you would need to see to kind of 
turn that corner and get to that point? I guess... Huh. I... I I really don't know, being honest. So, it's it's important to point out that you are in the top ten of your class. You were number one in your class last year, but you're in top ten of out of how many students in your grade? Three hundred something. All right, that's that's significant. Okay, you were the only person from your school chosen to go for. The leadership program, which, what's it, Hobie, Hobby? Hobie. Right? You were chosen for that. Right? The only person in your school that was chosen for that. This is a pattern. This is a pattern of you overachieving on a consistent level. You made the dean's list how many years when you were in school? Or the, the principal's list, I guess. However, yeah. you know, many times. Like, you have this entire uh, repertoire of accomplishments behind you. At some point in time, you need to take credit for it. And you need to let that build your self-confidence. If nothing else, you need to let it turn your pessimism, if not to optimism, at least to neutrality. You need to stop dwelling on what might happen. Because there's nothing you can do about what might happen, right? All you can do is make sure that you know what you're doing. You make sure you study, you do the work, you put the time in, and you see what the result is. And consistently, that result has been success. Yeah, I've also kind of now realized that uh, I don't look at the past all that much. What I do is I look at the future, and I look at the future in a pessimistic light and kind of try to leave the past behind. It's like I get uh, an accomplishment, but then I kind of just leave it to when it happened. And then I don't really look back to it after the time. See, and, and I can understand where you're coming from with that. But those accomplishments, especially at this, por- this point in your life, those are all stepping stones on the person that you're becoming. And there's a point, trust me, there's going to be a point further along in your life where you're going to have to get to the point that you can't dwell on the past. But right now, everything that you do is a stepping stone on the person that you're becoming, on that young adult that you're turning into right now. And those are things, good or bad, you know, I'm not saying ignore the bad and just look at the good, but good or bad those are the things that define who you are as a person. And they can, will continue to do so until you're probably somewhere in your 20s or 30s. So you kind of have to appreciate those things. One, if it's a mistake, you learn from it. Two, if it's an achievement, you have to give yourself credit for it and try to repeat it. But those are things you don't want to just forget about. When you get to my age and you get to the point where you've had more memories behind you than, than in front of you. That's when you can start picking and choosing the things that you can kind of turn the page on and move forward on. But right now you're still defining who you are. And do you really want to define yourself as a pessimistic person for the rest of your life? No, that's a struggle. You're, you're holding yourself down at that point. You've got this, this big, chain is anchor tied to your leg with pessimism that's holding you back and which makes everything that you do a struggle and you don't have to struggle at everything you already said you don't like the courses the the subjects that you have to struggle in so i turn the rest of life into struggle right yeah. get rid of that chain appreciate yourself for who you are other people do you know appreciate your accomplishments don't don't get cocky and don't think that you're, you know, you don't have to try hard. But when you do try hard, because you do all the time, and you see positive results, you're allowed to pat yourself on the back and enjoy that. You work very hard to get to this point in life. Don't stop working hard, but take the credit for it at least. And use that to, to have a much more optimistic outlook on things. Because it'll make life easier for you moving forward. Right? You deserve it. 
You know, when you when you run that race and you put that effort in and you're the, the first person across that finish line, you deserve the accolades for it. So you've put the effort in and you've passed the test and you've gotten the grades and you've done all the stuff to get the accolades. You you deserve it. You know, a lot of times people might heap praise on you for the sake of heaping praise and being polite. And I could see under those circumstances where you might not feel like you deserve it. But you've delivered consistently over and over year after year. You deserve this. There, This wasn't an accident. You didn't get to the top 10 in your class, you know, because you happened to pass one test. You know, your status in school is an average. And the longer you are in school, the harder it is to keep that average up because you've got more numbers that you're looking at. So the longer you're there with an average that high, the more accomplished you are. So take credit for it. Enjoy it. Be positive about it because it's a good thing. How many other kids that are in the top 10 in your school are pessimists, do you think? I I don't know. It'd be interesting to, to maybe find out who they are and, and find out what their outlook is. Because I can almost guarantee that they're probably not pessimistic. They're probably critical of themselves. Yeah. And people that, that achieve that level of success tend to be very critical of themselves. But you'll probably find that they're mostly optimistic. Because it's a lot easier to go through life optimistic. So... We're going to take our second break and then we're going to come back and I'm going to scroll down and we're going to talk about how to be more optimistic. All right. We'll All be right. right back. Insights into entertainment, a podcast series taking a deeper look into entertainment and media. Our husband and wife team of pop culture fanatics are exploring all things from music and movies to television and fandom. We'll look at the interesting and obscure entertainment news of the week. We'll talk about theme park and pop culture news. We'll give you the latest and greatest on pop culture conventions. We'll give you a deep dive into Disney, Star Wars, and much more. Check out our video episodes at youtube.com backslash insights into things. Our audio episodes at podcast.insightsintoentertainment.com or check us out on the web at insightsintothings.com. Welcome back to Insights in a Teen. Today we're talking about optimism. And now we're going to talk about how to be more optimistic. If you tend to if you tend toward mostly pessimist what? If you tend toward mostly pessimistic thinking, uh, you can get better at seeing what's good. Okay, that didn't sound right. That's okay. Here are some things to try. Notice good things as they happen. At the end of the day, take 10 minutes to run through your day and come up with things that you're grateful for. Write them down in a journal or keep track using motivational app on your phone or tablet. Train your mind to believe you can make good things happen in your life. Get in the habit of telling yourself specific things you can do to succeed. For example, if I study, I can get a better grade. If I practice, I'll perform well at the audition. If I go on that volunteer trip, I'll meet new friends. Don't blame yourself when things go wrong. What does your inner voice say when things don't go as planned? Instead of thinking, I failed that math test because I'm terrible at math, tell yourself, I failed that math test because I didn't study enough. I won't let that happen next time. Instead of saying, Grace broke up with me because I'm such a loser, think, now I know why people say breakups are so painful, but hanging out with my friends will help me feel better again. When something good happens, give yourself credit. Think of what you did to make a good outcome possible. Did you prepare for the, did you prepare for the test? Practice with dedication. 
Think of the strengths you used and how they helped you succeed. Remind yourself that setbacks are temporary. As soon as something goes wrong, remind yourself that it will pass, and come up with a plan for making that happen. For example, my SAT results aren't what I hoped, but I can study more and take the tests again. Notice how other people talk about themselves. Are friends and family members optimistic or pessimistic? For example, does your dad say, "I burn the hot dogs. I'm just a terrible cook." Or does he say, "I burn the hot dogs because I got distracted watching the dog chase a squirrel around the backyard?" Optimism is a thinking style that can be learned, which means that pessimism can be unlearned. It can take a little while, so don't feel discouraged. Becoming more aware of the two styles can gradually help you start noticing more ways to be optimistic. Just keep telling yourself, "I can be more optimistic." And I'm going to keep practicing. So, what do you think? Do you think this is something that you can or will work on to try to be more optimistic? Probably, yeah. Do you see the benefits of it? Yeah, I do. I mean, I'm generally, I don't know. I think I'm pretty even when it comes to things. I I can sometimes get down on myself, so I totally understand where you get it from.、Um, I think the position that I'm in. Professionally, means that I am not allowed to to be pessimistic. You know, I have to have a certain level of optimism in order to lead my team. So that kind of forces me in that direction. And sometimes it's a struggle. Sometimes, you know, this week is a good example. Every day this week has been some kind of emergency at work, and when you're constantly in firefighting mode, it gets very exhausting. You know, it's Thursday now. We had our our latest emergency today, and for me, I, I tend to not panic when it comes to emergencies. I slip almost into a mechanical mode where I I kind of drop the emotions. I look at what the options are, and I just try to try to work through problems. And I do that as much to be productive as I do. So that my team doesn't see panic or negativity, because they vibe, they they get their feeling from me. So if I don't set a good example for them, then they're not going to perform to their peak. As an individual, I have to imagine it's a little bit tougher because you're trying to self motivate yourself. How well do you think you motivate yourself to drive yourself? I mean, obviously, academically, you're very successful at that. How else are you in the rest of your life, your life, emotionally and and personally? How do you? How well do you think you motivate yourself?、Uh, I can certainly motivate myself in certain instances, but other times it's kind of like I don't feel like it. Uh, but most of the time, especially when like a task needs to be done, I'll try motivating myself in order to get that task done, or like find a way to get the task done in a, in like、uh, an amount of time, by like breaking it up and figuring out it out that way. And then other times it's just like I don't really feel like it. Now, do you think if you had more of a of an optimistic outlook on life and you were able to curb that pessimism? That you'd be able to motivate yourself better and be more efficient and more accomplished in the things that you do. Probably, yeah.、Um, maybe if I was more optimistic,、uh, I wouldn't feel like I would have to just watch videos to not think about things. If I was more optimistic, maybe I could actually get more stuff done. That's a very good point. Now you've had several days of good days, optimistic days this week. Do you feel this late in the week any different from that? Do you feel more energized? Do you feel more inspired? Do you feel、um, more positive going into Friday and the weekend because of that? Yeah,、uh, being more optimistic this week, I have noticed that like I'm a lot less like t- well, I'm tired, but like I'm not grumpy tired. Like I actually like. Feel calm, tired, or it's you're like sleepy, tired, and what are other dwar- the dwarf we can think of? <laughs> yeah, um, uh, but uh, I'm I'm excited for uh the weekend, and even though I have like 
five tests and quizzes tomorrow, I'm actually not really worried too much about too many of them because, like, I know there's going to be something good happening during school that day. And, um, you know, I have the weekend to look forward to. There you go. And you know the material. We've studied it. You've done the work. You're familiar with it. I think you're, you'll knock these tests out of the out of the ballpark. So, see, positive outlook. Look on the bright side. You know, if nothing else, it's it takes less energy to be positive than it does negative. It takes more muscles in the face to frown than it does to smile. I thought that was true, though. Doesn't matter. Just keep <laughs> saying that, okay? I don't know. I can look I'm, that up. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure we had a thing where we would talk about that and phrases that are not actually true. And that was one that was not true. Well, you know what? <laughs> I'm going to look that up, and and next on the next podcast we'll confirm it with scientific research. Got it. Uh, I think that was pretty much all we had for the day for the podcast today. We'll take a quick break and come back with your closing remarks. All right. All right. All right. So to everybody out there, I just wanted to say that optimism is definitely a very important thing that I'll I feel a lot of people can learn. And again, much like with almost everything we've talked about recently, uh, it's going to come easier to some people and harder uh, to others. And I feel like anybody can learn it. And I'm, uh, I'm hopeful to be more optimistic because yeah, I've, I've started feeling a lot, a lot more positive when it comes to being more optimistic than pessimistic. And, of course, pessimis- pessimism, that's how you say it, right? Yeah, yeah. You said it about five different ways. <laughs> okay. Today, so. Well, pessimism, uh, you know, does have its place when it comes to certain instances, but it's one of those things where you really don't want to be consumed by it. I've been consumed by pessimism many times, and it is not fun. So I wouldn't recommend that to anybody. Zero out of ten stars. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Nicely done. <laughs> thank you. Uh, wise words as always, uh, before we do go, I want to finish up the business of the podcast here. Uh, we do want to invite again, those of you who, uh, don't already subscribe, you can find audio versions of this podcast listed as insights into things, insights into teens, teens, teens. You can find audio and video versions of all of our podcasts listed as insights into things. We're available on Apple, Spotify, Google, Stitcher, etc. I would also invite you to give us your feedback. We'd love to hear from you. Tell us how we're doing. Give us your suggestions for what you'd like us to talk about. You can email us at comments at insightsintothings.com. We are on Twitter at twitter.com slash insightsintothings. We do stream five days a week, both on Twitch at twitch.com slash insightsintothings and on YouTube at youtube.com slash insights into things. And you can find us on Facebook at facebook.com slash insights into things podcast, where you can find links to those and much more on our official website at insights into things.com and you. And don't forget to check out our other two podcasts, Insights and Entertainment, hosted by you and Mommy, which I haven't done in a while, and Insights into Tomorrow are not really a monthly podcast anymore, and I don't know when you guys are going to do another one, hosted by you and my brother Sam. You know, (laughs) you're never going to get a job in marketing like that. I don't care. I don't want one. (laughs) Alrighty, that's it, folks. Another one in the books. Bye, everyone. Bye.